a lot of you guys have been asking me, especially in the comments, Omir Yurtsevin, we know the Knicks have not elected to sign him to the roster. We know he's likely going to a Greek team internationally. That's good and all. But why? What happened during the audition? Was it that bad of an audition that the Knicks said, nope, I don't want to sign him. He's not good enough. Well, thankfully, because of Ian Bagley of SNY, an NBA insider, we finally have more details on the Omer Yurtsevin situation with the Knicks. Let's go ahead and break that down for you guys. Shout out to Ian Bagley for giving us the following information. According to him, Omer Yurtsevin, I reached out to the glasses for clarity, and Omer worked out for the Knicks as the, excuse me, at the, as the Stein line stated, workout was early July. New York made Omer an offer, but it wasn't something he would consider seriously. Panthikos, I think that's how you say it, which is the Greek team, and Omer, excuse me, and Omer, sides are close on a deal, but nothing is done as of right now. So shout out to Ian Bagley for giving us that following information about Omer Yurtsevin and why he didn't sign with the Knicks. So it does seem like even though he worked out for the Knicks, the Knicks liked something. They offered him a contract, but, it, but excuse me, but it wasn't something. It wasn't a contract that he wasn't ever going to really consider. What that likely means is it was either a partially guaranteed contract or a non-guaranteed deal. And if you're that type of guy, you, you're somebody who wants to go back into the NBA, you likely want a guarantee deal or some type of guarantee that you're going to play significant minutes. The Knicks likely couldn't guarantee either of those things. Maybe they offered him a training camp invitation. And if that's the case, then you're not even guaranteed a role. You could play, you could do whatever you want. But if you don't do what you need to do in training camp, you may not get signed. And then at that point, maybe the offer from the international team is no longer on the table, and then you can't do nothing. You're not making any money, and you took a risk. You took a chance, but it didn't pay off. If that was the case, which it does sound like, according to Ian Bagley, I can understand why Omer didn't take the offer and is looking like, excuse me, and is looking like he's going to sign with this international team in Greek, excuse me, in Greece. It makes a lot of sense because over there, he's going to get playing time. Maybe it's not the same amount of money as NBA level money, but it's still money. He's still going to get some type of money. He's still going to play doing something that he loves. And he's going to have an impact, a role on that team. Could the Knicks promise him an impact, a role? Could they promise him minutes besides maybe practice, even if he made the team? It's unlikely given the roster that we have at this point in time. So shout out to Ian Bagley. He really did help answer a lot of the questions that we had. Because I don't know about you guys, but I was really wondering. He's a young guy, young center. He did have some experience in the NBA wasn't a scrub by any means. So why wouldn't the Knicks try to offer him some type of deal? Thankfully, we know now the Knicks offered him a contract. But again, it was a contract that they knew likely he wasn't going to accept. So did they really offer him a deal? That's something that we can discuss in a little bit of a later video maybe. But as of right now, I think it's clear. The Knicks are looking for a backup big man, a backup center. How do I know that? Because they worked out Omer Yurtsevin among other players. They were looking at a number of different free agents. And don't worry if you're asking yourself, well, if they're not looking to sign Omer Yurtsevin, then who else are they looking to sign? What other free agents are on the market? If you're asking that question, wait until the end of the stream, because I promise you, we're going to go over the top three free agents remaining right now that the Knicks potentially could use the MLE on and sign to this roster. So don't go anywhere. That's going to be a little bit later on to this show. But again, Omer Yurtsevin, we did offer him some type of contract. We don't know the details fully as of yet, according to Bagley, but it was a deal he was never going to accept. And because of that, he is likely going to sign with that Greece team internationally. No problem with that. Go ahead. Do what's best for your career. I think that's what he did at this point in time. The Knicks couldn't promise him any type of legitimate playing time. and and he really couldn't promise him any type of deal. It was non-guaranteed or really partially guaranteed, and he was really a training camp invite, and maybe he makes a team, maybe he doesn't. Likely chances are he might have not made the team. He might have done the best thing for him and his career by playing internationally. I hope it works out for him, but it was somebody on the, on the radar for me that I wanted the Knicks to go after and sign, but now we can close the book on that. 
We have to look at other potential players that the Knicks can go after. Knicks, well, coach is, I guess, is saying a bully will move you for a rebound. Randall isn't a fighter like that. He goes for the guarantee every time. Okay, all right. So I see what's happening here. We're talking about some Julius Randall hate. After, the, after what I just announced about how the team feels about Randall, we're talking about Randall hate. Okay, let's let's talk about this really quickly. Now, what coach said, at least about Randall, he was talking about Randall and his rebounding. He was saying that Randall is an opportunistic rebounder, basically meaning that if it's easy work, Randall will grab the rebound. But if it is a lot of effort, Randall won't go ahead and grab that rebound. Now, let me say this. I understand where coach is coming from because there were certain times in certain moments in, in, uh, during certain seasons, I remember Randall during those games. There are times where you want more from him on defense. And I think nobody in this audience would disagree that on certain plays, certain times, Julius Randall doesn't give you want, what you want him to give you on defense. It's okay to say that. Sometimes on rebounding as well, too. It's okay to say that. But if we're going to talk about that, can we talk about the times that he does? Can we talk about the times that he does play defense, that he does go in front of his man, that he does snatch the ball out of the air, that he does pass the ball uphill to somebody who's cutting, that he has that vision? Can we talk about that for a little bit? Because if we're going to talk about his faults and we're going to talk about the things he doesn't do well, then I expect the balance to be there too. So what things does he do well then? Because I can tell you one thing, when Julius Randle's passing that ball around all over and everybody's touching that ball, the Knicks are a more dangerous team. Nobody on the Knicks does that right now better than Randall, in my opinion. When Randall's on, especially on playmaking, he's probably one of the best we've ever seen. Nobody can argue that with me. You can talk defense till you're blue in the face. You can talk rebounding till you're blue in the face. But we can talk about that afflicting multiple players on the Knicks. That's just not solely Randall. Mitchell Robinson covers for a lot of people, doesn't he? The fact that we have OG Ananobi and we have uh, Mikel Bridges, that's just going to help cover for more people. If anything, we should be praising the fact that Randall should be able to do anything he wants to do because we have the players to cover for him. Why are we not talking about that? Why are we talking about Randall not being the fighter, not being this guy? So the fighter, right? The fighter who tried to come back and fought to come back from an injury that nobody thought he was going to come back from, and even though there was a small chance, he was still fighting to come back because he wanted to play playoff basketball for this Knicks team because he knew he could be a difference maker. That's what we're talking about here? This is what we're talking about here, coach? Listen, man, like I said, we can talk, we can have a basketball conversation. I can tell you everything Randall doesn't do, but then you have to tell me what he does do. If that's the conversation you want to have, we can have it. But you can't just knock him because he doesn't do these things, but he does all of these things. He's the best player on offense some nights. He does it better than Jalen some nights. And I'm a Jalen Brunson fan. I, I don't know. All right, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. If you enjoyed these clips from the live show, be sure to subscribe to the channel and have notifications turned on so you don't miss any new episodes or when we go live. Thanks for watching, Nick fans. And until next time, peace.